just in case we miss huh. people. That boy, Jay Moore. Yeah, a baby. <laughs> Eating up in here. Um, I'll ask you there, Kent. How old's your son? I see that with a lot of young kids though stepping out. A lot of us, um, a lot of kids are scared of the ball, so that's they think not, if they I mean, step out that they can see the ball great, better. Big point right there. I mean, and that's but, something too. I mean, that's we could talk about that for a minute. I mean, you remember probably guys when you were little, folks would, like take tennis balls and throw them at you, and like make you stand there and turn and get hit by. A learn how ball. to hit, get hit, yeah. Learn how to get hit, and not. I mean, and I mean, eventually you kind of get used to it or you don't. Um, those are things that, I mean, experience is going to take that away. Mm -hmm. um, the more confidence they have at the plate, it's going to take that away. Um, so as long as the kid's aware of it, I mean, and they're not necessarily – if they're going to the plate with a fearful mindset, we need to address that. I mean, we got to get their mind on the right thing. But the more confidence yeah. they have in their swing, eventually they're going to – that that stepping out stuff will go away. Yeah, and he's nine. It looks like Adam's son is nine too. He said he thinks it's fear. But that's what it is majority of the time. Whenever a kid steps out, is he's scared of the ball, scared to get hit. But like I said, I mean, that kind of just goes away over time. And I don't, I don't know if it's a good thing nowadays. Like Jonathan said, we used to actually like be taught how to get hit. Like our coach would throw balls at us, and we'd have to turn and make sure we get hit in the back or in the back of the arm or something. Yeah. Um, and Frank's really big on that too. He talks about that all the time to learn how to take a pitch whenever someone gets thrown at or when it's That's thrown at I mean, guy, I mean, we could do too. I mean, we can show, we can give you guys a drill. We posted in the program or something along those lines. I mean, it's a tennis ball drill. It's a real easy drill. You can go to the house. I mean, you don't even have to have a case to do it, do it inside, outside, wherever. You're literally just throwing the ball at the kid and, and letting them stand there and turn and, and understand that it's, I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes it's going to hurt a little bit, but, you're not going to die. You're not going to break in half. Yeah. You're going to be fine. I mean, more times than not, you're not going to get hit. Yeah. So, well, I think another good thing to practice with that is tracking the ball, uh -huh. making sure that they understand how their eyes really help their swing, especially with the fear of getting hit by the ball. I know a lot of kids take their head off the ball and they swing. A good drill to practice tracking all the way to the mid or making sure your eyes are on that ball the whole time it's just tracking it mm -hmm. that's another way to, of taking a pitch you don't want to swing at but make sure you track it all the way to the plate or the yeah, but, so it's just being comfortable in the box and like as y'all saw me in college i constantly was down there in the bullpen just sitting in on bullpens mm -hmm. yeah. like just working on seeing the pitches come in tracking them all the way seeing the spin out of the pitcher's hand and all that stuff so I said the more confidence that they have in the box, the less likely they're going to be fearful of getting hit. So that, that's another thing I just thought of is, <clears throat> you know, just doing some practice, get down there. If they're throwing a bullpen or a pitcher's warming up before a game, just stand in the box and, uh, you know, just get comfortable in the box. Learn how to track that ball all the way to the mitt. <clears throat> and you'll realize that you'll, get, you'll be much more comfortable when you step in. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Any other questions? So if y'all prefer to talk to us in person, just raise the hand. You can scroll down and click on raise your hand. I think it's under reactions. Yeah, click on reactions, click on raise hand. You can talk to us in person. It's a lot easier than yeah, typing up. things out in the chat. Yeah. So I said, this is a space for y'all to come and ask questions to make sure that you understand the drills and doing them properly. That's another thing, you know, if you're constantly doing, we do a lot of swings inside this program. And if you're doing the drills incorrectly, you're creating a bad habit. Yeah. So like I said, we want to make sure, and that's why we provide this right here. So y'all can come in here and ask us questions if you're having an issue with a drill. And I know everyone has issues going through it. I struggled big time my first time through these drills. So <laughs> I, said, I know y'all are seeing the same issues whenever I was uh, going through it too. So that's what we're here to help y'all understand the drills and how to properly do them. So we're getting the most results. But we're still seeing crazy results. Though. 
the testimonials that we're getting from players are unreal. Now that's that nuts. Picking up. I mean, mm -hmm. players are really getting to showcase what they've been working on. Yeah. I noticed a lot more softball too. Yeah. A lot of. Uh, I actually had a player, college player, uh, text me yesterday. Her name was Lily. I think she – where is she committed to? LSU, I believe she, she's committed to LSU. Um, but she had Tommy John surgery on her throwing arm. I didn't even know softball players had Tommy John. But um, she texted me and said that the one-hander is saving her because she's able to still do the one-hand drills and learn how to stay inside the ball. That's awesome. With her – you know, she just had surgery with her uh, throwing arm. She can't do anything with that. But she's saying that our, our one-hander is saving her right now, which is funny. That's that's work ethic right there. You just had Tommy John. No worries. Get in, get in the cage and work on the lead lead arm. Probably why she's one of the best high school softball players right now. Got that work ethic. Still got a few folks uh, joining in too. So if you just now joined in, you kind of know the drill. Or if you don't, I mean, it's the place for you to ask questions. Raise your hand um, if you'd like to chat with us or you can uh, type it in the chat box and we'll we'll answer those questions for you. Oh yeah, that's true. Today's the last day. <coughs> so I'm looking forward to going down to Mo Vaughn's facility and working with his kids next week. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be fun. Hopefully we can get some good video. I right, so I know Mo's a little bit different than from what we are. You know, we teach hands first and then lower half. Mo's the opposite. He teaches lower half first and then the hands. So I'm sure we'll get a nice little little content piece on the differences between our, our training styles. Yeah. That'll be good. Success stories are welcome too, folks. Your kids are seeing results. Um, I love testimonials. Hype them up. I actually do go through our testimonials a lot. Like I'll just go through and read it because I, I actually I enjoy, you know, reading the success stories that people are having and how we're able to impact them. You know, it's it's awesome to be able to to finally teach a kid how to understand the mechanics of a swing. You know what I mean? You give them, I mean, in a sense, you give them, I mean the ability in somewhat of a sense to take ownership of their game. I mean, hitting is the number one thing in the game. If you, I mean, besides pitching, pitching is such a, I mean, a different animal to me. Hitting, anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. And you can do it for a long period of time. Now, everybody's time may be different. Yeah. I mean, I may play longer than you. You may play longer than me or whatever. That could go a lot more into the work ethic if everybody was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Camwood program has proven to be such a good tool that if everybody would kind of get in that system, um, and it's not necessarily like Trey said, we didn't create it, but the whole aspect of work ethic, we, we're kind of bringing that back to the forefront. Mm -hmm. If they'll work at it the right way, they give themselves the ability to play as long as they want. I yeah. mean, it's up to you then. I mean, it's up to your work ethic. How bad do you really want it? That's the thing. A lot of people, when I first made this program, were complaining that it was five days a week. But I'm like, I mean, if you want to get better at something, you got to work at it. I say, and it's not that only like 30 minutes a day, but um, you know, you got to put in the, the the work. And that's the main thing I see with uh, youth players, and you know, going and getting lessons from somebody, is they go and get that lesson on a Monday, they get better then, and then they go home and do nothing until the Monday after that. Well. Now you'd completely lost what you were just working on the Monday before. You know what I mean? So whenever you learn a new skill, you have to go home and you have to constantly work on that new skill to make it a habit. And that's where our program is so successful is, you know, we're doing so many repetitions. We're teaching that uh, muscle memory, right? So the more reps you do and the more muscle memory you uh, build up, the consistency builds up. And that's where you become the better player. That's why you see such bigger results with our program as opposed to uh, the, the normal, let's go to a hitting coach on a Tuesday, Thursday, and that's it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and guys, let this not just 
be about <laughs> sometimes baseball and hitting. Let this bleed over into your kids, like what they do day to day. This is just an work ethic we're explaining to you. This doesn't just affect them here at the game. This is going to affect them at home. And they wake up. When, yeah, all that kind of stuff this plays into. If that's yeah. lacking, the work ethic here in the cage is going to lack because they're that's what they're practicing at home. Mm-hmm. So make them practice that work and discipline at home so that when they come in the cage, they're used to it. They're yeah. ready to do it because they're used to it. Yeah. And that's some things that we struggle with here at the shop. Some people are hard to come in here and get right into it. They take 10 to 15 minutes to start having that discipline I want yeah. because I'm hammered and into them to where they have to do it. Yeah. So I don't – get your kids to where they already have that instilled by doing stuff outside of baseball sometimes mm-hmm. that provokes yeah. that discipline and work ethic. Work so when they, to work. Yeah, so when they get in here, uh-huh. this ain't nothing new, okay? It's time to go to work, just like I've been doing every day. I got uh, trash yeah. piles you can pick up outside. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, dogs have you out there doing barrel rolls or whatever it is. <laughs> but, yeah. But we have someone said they just ordered for a seven-year-old and it's on the way. Any advice to start out? Um, my advice would be to really focus on staying inside the ball, which is the hand path. So we want to make sure that we're getting those proper mechanics with the hand path first especially at seven years old, whenever we're younger, whenever I work with a younger player, I'm always uh, working on the hands first before I even introduce the lower half to them. Cause I don't want to confuse them as a young player. So uh, if you got the bat, <clears throat> you should have the program if you're uh, in this zoom call right now. So I assume you have the all American 30 day program. Um, the first week is all the hands drills. I would really focus on the one hand drill, teaching how to stay inside the ball, and then the no feet, no shoulders with the big bat. <clears throat> and if you see that um, he's not consistent with the hand staying inside the ball, I would not move on to the lower half portion yet. Okay, I would stay and focus on the hand drills first until he builds up that consistency and the understanding of what we're trying to teach. And then once he's consistent, move on to the lower half. Because especially at a young age, I said, you don't want to throw too much at them at first, all at once. You're going to confuse them. So um, I would really focus on the one hand, <clears throat> the one hand drill, teach them staying inside the ball, and the uh, uh, no feet, no shoulders with the bigger bat at first. That's one of the things I see a lot of the times, like mess ups with younger kids, is a lot of coaches try to throw too much at them at first. It's like a seven year old is going to have a bunch of mechanical flaws in their swing, more than likely. And a lot of coaches try to go in and fix everything all at once. That's not what we want to do because you're going to confuse the player. So work on small things. And then once, like, say someone has seven problems, let's work on problem number one first. And then once they're consistent with problem number one, then move on to number two. Because if you try to fix all seven at one time, you're just going to create more problems. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, they say that they try to do too much sometimes. Like I said, and that's where you're, you're not going to accomplish anything if you're trying to fix everything all at once. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's the same thing with just everyday life and business. If, you know, if I have seven things to do for business one day, you know, you just got to knock them out one at a time. I can't try to do them all at once or I won't get anything done. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's a great game, folks. Great game. Very relatable. Everything we do. I'll tell you, the the discipline part of baseball, you know, it's – the main thing is building a routine. That's one one thing that's helped me even after my career in baseball is I learned a routine. I learned how to stick to that routine throughout my college years of playing. Like I said, you take a lot of these – like this work ethic that we learned playing sports, that's something that you take with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's why I'll be successful in life is because I understand the work that goes into something if I want to be successful. Yeah. Got to love sports. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? And gals? <clears throat> I'm bad guys all the time. Sorry if I keep clearing my throat and y'all hear that. <laughs> I apologize. It's all right. Any other questions? I said if it's 
if you don't feel like tech or typing it in the chat, you can always raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Don't forget, take advantage of the hotline too during the week. Um, had a few folks reaching out this week. One of them was a testimonial about a kid going through the program, kind of finishing up. Um, but if you don't have that number, you know uh, where to find that, or you don't know where to find that. It's inside of the Camwood programs, right there at the very bottom, or right there in the middle. It's typed in, it says Camwood Hotline, text hotline. So any of the questions that you may um, have and you don't want to wait till Thursday to ask, uh, that's not a problem. You have the hotline or the Discord chat to get in touch with one of us and, and get that question answered. So um, another week of it. We sure appreciate all of you guys. If any of y'all have anything else, Trey, Brian. Hotline number. Do we know? Do you know that off the top of your head? I'll type it to you. I don't even know the. I don't even know the number. Do we have a lot of people that use that hotline? Yeah, it's steady. I mean, it's not a lot. Um, not as many as I'd like, truthfully. Yeah. Um, you would think with the, with the amount that of the program that sells, I mean, like a lot of people don't use the, the resources that we provide. Yeah. Which obviously these people do, they're in here in the Zoom, which is great. You want to try to learn new things, which is awesome. Like That's I said, right. we should have, you know, thousands of people on these things every week. Yeah, and, we, and we'll kind of leave you with this. I mean, as we close, if you have teammates or parents or friends or whatever that have kids playing the game, share this with them. Do not um, know the answer to make their kid better and not tell them. I yeah. mean, they're on your <laughs> team. You. Let's yeah. all be a team here. Team Camwood, share the share the knowledge with your friends and um, bring them in That's, here. We look forward to – go ahead. I'll, I'll say something crazy, and the coach texted me a couple of days ago. It's made me think about it. You know, about two years ago, I went and worked with just three players at Appalachia High next to me. The team had never made the playoffs before in their life. Like, the school had never made playoffs before. Um, I go there and work with the three worst hitters on their team with this program. Those three worst hitters became their three best hitters, and they just so happened to make the playoffs that year that I went and worked with those three guys. This year, right now, is the year number two. The coach saw their progress, had the entire team do our system, they're now ranked in the top 10 in the state of Georgia. Yep. They went from ne never making a playoff game before in school history. Two years later, they're ranked in the top 10 now from just following this program and following this system. I mean, it works. Yeah. We could send video to the hotline. Yes, absolutely. Text, video. Um, I mentioned this last week. Make sure <clears> – <throat> excuse me, we're all coughing. Make sure when you do text the hotline – um, send some videos of the actual program drills with the videos that you send. If you're sending a game bat swing or whatever, um, at least give us some reference um, to what they're seeing or what they're doing in the program, where they're at in the program, so we kind of know where to, where to start with addressing. I mean, depending on if a kid's been through the program or not, I may start in a different place. I mean, I may yeah. go a lot farther up the ladder than I would with a kid that's just now starting out on day one. So give us a little bit of reference with that. Um, and we will look forward to seeing you guys again right here on the Camwood Hotline next week. Thank you guys so much. Y'all have a great, fantastic weekend.